This presentation will show the reduction and fixation of a both column fracture, AO classification 63C1 through the ilioinguinal approach. Following the completion of this exercise, you should be able to describe the pathoanatomy of the both column fracture, recognize the importance of reduction for the outcome of a both column fracture, and outline the instrumentation and the steps for reduction and fixation. The standard instruments for reduction are the Faraberth clamp and two-pointed reduction forceps. The special pelvic reduction instruments are the angled reduction forceps, the large reduction forceps and the ball spike. All of these instruments have a pointed ball tip. These instruments from the basic pelvic instrument set are used to insert the 3.5mm cortex screws. The bending template and the bending pliers are needed to contour the plate. The plastic model shows that a part of the iliac wing is still attached to the sacrum. There is also a large free fragment of the iliac wing. The anterior column fragment is connected to the articular surface, as is the posterior column. The main fracture line through the iliac wing is oblique and runs from lateral to medial. The greater sciatic notch is fractured. The distal fragment is displaced medially. There is no continuity between the dome and the sacroiliac joint. The hip capsule usually remains intact. It is attached to the anterior and posterior columns, allowing indirect reduction of the posterior column through an anterior approach when ligamentotaxis is applied. When viewed from the internal aspect, the sacroiliac joint and the iliac wing fragment that remains attached to the sacrum can be seen. This is the large free fragment and this is the anterior column component with the acetabular dome. It is also possible to view the posterior column component. Part of the anterior column with the superior pubis ramus can be seen as well. The femoral head is visible, or at least palpable, through the fracture of the quadrilateral surface. The anatomical reduction starts at the proximal aspect of the iliac wing. It is important to restore its normal curvature. A Faraberth clamp is used to reposition the free fragment of the iliac wing. The pointed reduction forceps is applied to reduce and temporarily fix the iliac crest. A hole for a lag screw is prepared in the usual manner, close to the peripheral border of the iliac crest. To compress the fracture line, a 3.5mm cortex screw is inserted. The Faraberth clamp is removed. Then the small free fragment of the inner posterior aspect of the pelvis is repositioned. The ball spike is used to exert pressure and a lag screw is inserted. Even though this fragment is non-articular, anatomical reduction is mandatory to ensure the overall alignment of the fragments. The pointed reduction forceps is removed. Now the concavity of the iliac fossa must be restored. The iliac wing is rotated internally using a Faraberth clamp. The large pelvic reduction forceps is positioned around the anterior column and the repaired portion of the iliac wing to provide additional reduction across the oblique fracture line. Care is taken not to inadvertently open the fracture on the opposite side. 
the pointed reduction forceps is used to maintain anatomical reduction across the superior fracture line of the anterior column. The anterior column is secured to the iliac wing with a lag screw whose trajectory begins lateral to the anterior inferior iliac spine. The screw is directed into the posterior innominate bone just lateral to the sacroiliac joint. In young hard bone, where there is good screw purchase, the far cortex does not have to be perforated. The Faraberf clamp is removed. In the next step, a short lag screw is inserted from the inner aspect of the fossa to the outer iliac wing fragment, crossing the oblique fracture line. The pelvic reduction forceps is removed. A lag screw is now inserted across the iliac crest. The reduction forceps is removed. A 12 hole 3.5 J shaped reconstruction plate is contoured to fit the pelvic brim. The plate must be long enough to provide adequate fixation of both the posterior and the anterior fractures. This plate usually is extended to the pubic body. The bending template is moulded to the bone so that the contours of the bone can be transferred to the plate. The anterior column runs from the anterior to the posterior aspect of the pelvis. It is concave, then convex, and then concave again. The bending pliers are used to contour the plate. As the primary purpose of this plate is to buttress the anterior column, posterior contouring is critical. First, the concave contouring is performed. The plate is flipped and the convex contouring is made. The curvature of the plate is adjusted by bending along its longitudinal axis. After the plate has been contoured, its profile is checked against the template. The plate is laid on the pelvic brim with the proximal end held in place using the ball spike. At the distal end, the plate position is adjusted and the plate is fixed in place with a 3.5 mm screw. After adjusting the plate position in the posterior aspect of the pelvis, a 3.5 mm screw is inserted parallel to the sacroiliac joint. The distal screw is secured. The ball spike is introduced to help improve the position of the anterior column fracture components and a screw is inserted through the third distal plate hole. A second screw is placed in the proximal end of the plate. The large angled reduction forceps is introduced. In this situation, the short arm is placed through the second window and the long arm through the third window. The forceps is applied from the pelvic brim to the quadrilateral surface. The posterior column is reduced to its correct position. Now the posterior column is fixed by inserting a lag screw through the plate. This screw is directed towards the ischial tuberosity. The reduction forceps is removed. A lag screw is inserted through the adjacent proximal plate hole oriented in the direction of the ischial spine. It is not necessary to fill all the plate holes with screws. Screws must not be inserted through the plate holes in the area of the iliopectineal eminence so as to avoid the serious risk of penetrating the hip joint. Usually under clinical conditions, the final reduction of the articular surface cannot be directly visualized. However, for this exercise, the hip capsule has been opened to allow direct visualization. You should now be able to describe the pathoanatomy of the both column fracture, recognize the importance of reduction for the outcome of a both column fracture, and outline the instrumentation and the steps for reduction and fixation.